Well, hello. I want to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. Uh, this is a show where I look at the pens I'm using during the week. And this week I have spring break, so I'm letting it all grow out. So if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, at all different price points, interest you, please subscribe. If you'd like to comment on any of the pens seen here, or perhaps the surprise at the end of the video, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. So let's take a look at what I'm using this week. So from left to right, oops, this guy got turned around. I have my Pilot Justice 95. I have a Lamy 2000. I have a Caveco Lilliput. Yeah, you've never seen that one on here before. I have a Scrix 419. A Monami Ulika. An Omasogiva. What one of my viewers calls the Space Wand, which is my Rotrink Core. Uh, one of the reviews I'm filming this break, because I can. I have my Aurora 88. And I have a pen that I don't remember what it's called. It has squirrels on it, which we'll get to. Deli? We'll go with Deli. I see the word Deli on it. Yeah, we'll go with Deli. I just realized that the Deli was off screen most of that time. I apologize. It, I couldn't tell on the little preview there until I was looking and said, Wait, there's nothing beside the... Omas, or aside the Roar 88. Yes, I do see. I just barely got the edge of the camcorder and screen. I didn't notice on preview, and I don't feel like restarting this at this point, so we'll just move on. As always, I'll be writing in my trusty Bomo art journal. So the first pen I'll be using is my Pilot Justice 95. Fairly plain on the outside. The cool thing about it is the nib. Nib actually is adjustable from hard to soft just by moving this dealio bob around. Right now, I, for the most part, I usually keep it on soft, but every so often I run into an application where I want it hard. It, it's one of those pens that it's a gimmick, and I know it's a gimmick. There we go. <laughs> but uh, I like the gimmick. Uh, the ink I have in it is Noodler's Rattler Eel Red. Which is a lubricating ink. That's where the eel comes in. It's also very good at cleaning stains out. So uh, last time I had this pen, I set it down to clean it and then I put it away without cleaning it. I don't know how that happened. It was busy. So there were stains inside this. So I'm hoping with a little Rattler Eel Red running through it that I will deal with those stains. Tried to flush it and clean it, but it just wasn't happening. As always, my daily writer, the Lamy 2000. At least in the winter. In the summer, it takes a break and I let some other pens have their time in the sun. But it is quite a good writer. This is a pen I never thought I would buy. I'm not sure exactly why I put it in my shopping cart that I did. I like it. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. It's a Gaveco Lilliput with a fire blue finish on it. Uh, from what I've read, the fire blue as cool as it is, will eventually wear off. And I saw in one of Brian Goulet's videos that I don't want to forget it in my pants while I do laundry. Uh, I'm still working on the cartridge thing with it. Um, that's one of the reasons I didn't like it. Apparently there are some converters you can use in it, which is something I'm going to experiment with uh, after I run through this cartridge. This is the cartridge that came with it, so I'm going to guess it's Caveco Blue. I'm not really familiar with their line of inks. I do like 
one of the greens they have, and they have a purple that's rather attractive. But the pen, as you saw earlier, I mean, we'll put it next to the Lamy 2000. It's a short little fella. When you, uh, oh, this is awkward. So what you do is you post it. And it's much closer to standard size, I suppose. There we go. Oh. For whatever that's worth. Uh, I do like the Caveco Sport model. I own, well, two, I guess. Uh, I don't like Caveco's broader nibs, which is why I bought this one in a fine. My next pen is a Turkish pen. I didn't even know until recently, Turkey made pens. So that was interesting. This is a Scrix 419. I'll give you a close up of some of the other parts on it here in a second. Yes, it is spelled with two S's. Uh, I am told that the nib is somewhere between a fine and a medium, and the ink in it is Noodler's. Upper Ganges Blue, which I haven't written with in a long time. I like it though. Very, uh, it's a nice light blue. So, uh, you know, you take a look at the nib here. Scrix, see, I didn't make that up. Nice ink window. Yes, it's a piston filler. Price wasn't too bad either. This is about what you'd pay for, say, a Lamy Safari. Oops. No real finials, it's just injected molded plastic, but that's okay. Uh, there is, on the outside of the pen, the only real design to it is this on the clip. Come on. Work with me, buddy. There we go. The, the stylized S on the clip is about the only branding on the outside of the pen. And then on this little ring here, it says Scrix. Twice. So, you know, not an exciting pen, but not, not bad. It actually writes very nicely. Uh, this one, I was a spur-of-the-moment purchase. It's a Monami Olika. Came in several colors. This is a fine nib. I'm going to call it Monami Purple, or Monami, I don't actually know how to pronounce it. Well, it comes with three cartridges. I kind of assumed they would be standard international cartridges, but they're not. So, I haven't found, I don't own a piston converter that will fit into this. But, I can refill the cartridges, so that's at least something. <clears throat> and it does write pretty well, it's a... A similar nib to what's on a Pilot Varsity. You know, rubber grip. And not bad, not a bad looking pen for what it is. Now we'll jump a little ways up the price scale. One of my viewers suggested I need to get a brightly colored pen into the batch. So here's my Omaso Giva. She was very specific about which pens I should put in the batch too. So this is my Omas Ogiva Cocktail. Whoops, Ale. Uh, the nib on it is a medium, and it's extra flexible. My ink is an ink that I struggle with. Some pens absolutely seem to hate this ink. Stipula. Obviously, this pen is writing with it quite well. And I thought about going the, the uh, Noodler's Apache Sunset Route or something, but I don't know. This was just calling to me, so I thought I'd try out the combination. Uh, the Space Wand.
I was looking at some eggplant at the grocery store today. I didn't buy any. Uh, I know what I'm making this weekend doesn't involve eggplant, but sure was tempting. Of course, I have my Aurora 88 is still inked. This has quite an impressive ink reservoir, so I suspect you'll be seeing it for a few more weeks yet. I saw Larry from the Penbug Guy just recently got himself a Aurora Optima. Comes with a, he bought one with the Flex nib. So apparently last year with the, the Flex nib was on the Aurora 88s. Now they're on the Aurora Optima. I also saw for sale somewhere an Aurora Optima with the Soleil finish that I liked so much on the 88 but never bought. So temptation is always there, I guess. Uh, this is Robert Oster. I almost feel like I could do a flex off uh, between this and the Omaso Giva. I'll, I'll spoiler, the Omaso Giva would win, but this just feels more robust. I, I'm always scared the Omaso Giva is going to spring. Um, And my last pen was a spur-of-the-moment Etsy purchase. It, it came along with some uh, old Soviet pens that I'd purchased. This was, a, I think, made in England. It's a, it was advertised as a squirrel pen. I just, just for fun, I, get, I uh, did squirrel pen on Etsy, and this is what came up. So I'm guessing that means that this person printed the squirrel on there. It doesn't look too much like a squirrel, but... You know, they tried. And then, uh, it is a cartridge pen, which I knew for purchasing it. Who knows if this one will ever show up actually being reviewed. Oh, here we go. I didn't notice this before. Around, uh, whatever you call this part at the, at the top of the section. Uh, I'm not reading this real well on my preview, so I don't know if it'll show up on the video. I'll just read it to you, but there's writing here. The squirrel is a typical arboreal animal. So, for whatever that's worth, we'll call it a deli squirrel pen. I don't want to go to one of those delis where people are eating squirrels. I have no idea what brand the ink is, so we'll call it blue. So those are the pens I'm using this week. Now I'd like to turn your attention to something a little different. I don't do unboxing videos. I uh, hardly ever watch them. Uh, it's just not my thing. But I stopped at the post office today. I had three packages. Only one of which was one I had ordered. So this first one actually comes from a viewer. So, of course, I'm going to cover up their name and my name, but uh, in one of these kind of boxes. So let's see if I can get it open without destroying too much. I may cut this little bit of surgery here out of the video too, because that's one of the reasons I don't watch unboxing videos very often. Uh, and there's probably an easy way to open these boxes that I just don't know. Holy cow. There we go. So, I have some hint about what's in this box. It's a gentleman who's sending me some pens. Sorry, talking while I'm moving stuff. Are you sending me some pens that uh, he just doesn't use anymore and hoped I'd find a use for them? So, We'll see. So the box is open. This is the back side. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that is very unexpected. So, uh, this is a Jin, uh, Jin Hao or a Hero, I can't remember which. 616, whichever one it is. Looks like there's a few of them here. These are actually, depending on how they're made, they can be actually quite nice pens. Um, there's a, yeah, that's what I usually <laughs> do with the, the cheaper ones is I take this cage off because the cage just breaks. 
All right, so a few of them. Here's some interesting stuff in this bag. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Twisby, no, Lambert. Lambitau, so I guess not a Twisby Eco. Um, so it'll still be kind of fun to try. Ooh, that is a bright swell color. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, Jin Hao, I don't know what kind. A, hmm, I, I know I have used one before. A, uh, oh, it's a, is it a Lank CV bookworm? I think that's what it's called. Or no, a Lucky. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. There is a pen I've been kind of looking at but haven't bought that looks vaguely like this. But now that I've opened it, I see that it's not the same pen at all. Same barrel. Another, wow, all oh, Lambatoes, wow. Definitely going to have to try one of these out. And this is a Uranus, Uranus. Good thing I didn't pull too hard. It's a twist cap. I don't know anything about this pen. See, it's a cartridge converter. I've never used this brand before. I've heard of them. Never used one. And then in this box, bag. Let's see what else I have. Maybe I just closed it. There we go. Sorry I can't get the camera any higher. It's going to take some actual physical adjustment and resetting a few things. I just don't want to do that. Okay. Now let's take a look here. This is like a Caveco. What are they called? The clear Cavecos, except clearly it's not. Wing, Wings 307. I like that. That's bright. <laughs> this is an anonymous gray box. Contains another anonymous gray box. And I feel like I should know what pen this is. It's just not coming to me right now. Uh, the nib is a wing super quality fine. So I'll have to investigate further to figure out what that is. Uh, ooh, that's pretty. Now I have reviewed two different dragon pens from Jin Hao. I don't know if this is one of them. No. It seems to be similar to them, but not the same. Uh, so I don't know what make this is. I don't see any branding on it, so that'll be something to figure out. Ooh, that is an attractive ebonite. Airmail. That, I believe, is an Indian brand. I haven't reviewed too many Indian pens. And it says tipped fine. And I wonder if it's an eyedropper. Yep, that's an eyedropper and I think there's still ink in it. So, good thing I was cautious about that. <laughs> that is an attractive finish though. Wow. And it's a brand I've never used before. This is a Wingsung 3001. Oh, I like that. Clear feed. I feel like this pen, I need to put an exciting colored ink in it. Hmm. This is, oh, same kind of pen, just a different color. Different color. Uh, oh, another one like that pocket pen that I thought was a Caveco. We get this. 
Jin Hao something or other. That's attractive too. Okay. So, yeah, that's pretty. And then there's this with what looks, let's talk about the Soleil finish. I didn't know I'd be getting this. Um, kind of a, kind of like that Soleil finish from Aurora. This is a full one. I've used one full one. I don't remember. Ooh, and a little ink around it. I used one full one. I didn't have the best luck with it. This is looking more promising once I get it cleaned. So looks like a cartridge converter pen but maybe one that should be opened over a sink. So I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say your name, so I'll just say thank you. I uh, really appreciate this, and I look forward to trying these out. And I think I know I already have a home for a few of them, so thank you very much. So about 20 years ago, I moved to North Dakota from Pennsylvania. I moved to a really rural town. I mean, I know I, I say that I live in a small town now. This was a small town. It was about 400 to 500 people, somewhere in there. Uh, at the time, about 160 students in the school. That was K through 12. So I was the science teacher, and I taught some math as well. Uh, I taught everything in science, grades 7 through 12. And so, like I said, small town. So one of the first couples to introduce themselves to me there were they actually used to run the drugstore in that town. Uh, they'd retired. The, uh, the husband had some health problems and the wife, you know, she was not a pharmacist. He was. So they retired and they were some of the first people to introduce themselves to me. I actually lived in a house that was the upstairs, used to be the upstairs of the post office. And then the way back somebody had gotten the bright idea of cutting off the upstairs sliding it down turning it into a house and then uh, later on they replaced the bottom part with a more modern post office and that's where their daughter worked and uh, i would mow the lawn that was on my side of the post office because that was butted up against my land and you know <laughs> so uh, i knew them um a few months after i moved there the man died he, uh, well, I don't need to get specific, but he died. And uh, so I would sometimes for the wife, I'd take care of her dog when she would go somewhere. I, I got along with the dog pretty well. The dog was always happy to see me because I think I could take it on more exciting walks than she could because I was a lot younger than she was. And uh, anyway, I was there. The dog did end up passing away. She called me. She was... She knew the dog, that was, the do that was it for the dog. So uh, we took, I drove her over to the vet and then, uh, you know, they put the dog to sleep and then I drove her back, which was not a happy trip. But anyway, uh, I moved away. I've, I've kept in touch with them. Um, she, uh, the, the old, older lady came to Medora, which is north of me. Uh, it's North Dakota's big tourist spot for a day. And called me, and so I came up and spent the day with her. Um, a few years ago, I'm not sure how many years, she got. Uh, she ended up in a nursing home, and then she passed away there. So her daughter's been going through her house and cleaning it out, I think, to sell it. I'm sure to sell it. And ran across some old pens, and she says, Hey, these are mom and dad's house. Would you like to have them? And I said, Sure. Uh, so I don't really know what I'm going to get when I open this. There is a personal letter I see on the front side, but it's got, you know, addresses and stuff on it, so I won't show you that. But I will pull this open and we'll see what's inside. It's also completely sealed in tape, so this could be interesting. Okay, oh wow. Oh boy, that packaging. Dusty. Well, I will be vacuuming here after a while. So, okay, nice letter. Yeah, that, that packaging is quite something. Dusty. And it's all over the floor and my clothes now. But anyway, these are the pens, so let's see what I have. This 
Looks like some kind of a dip pen. Not too familiar with dip pens, so I'll have to figure it out. Looks like it's had a little bit of repair work done on it. This, I've reviewed this model before. This is an Esterbrook J. I wonder if it still writes. It has a, what's the number on that nib? One five five five. This lighting down here is not the best for me reading this stuff. And I'll just have to... Springs back pretty well. So I'll just have to see. I, I'll give it a good wash to find out if it still writes. But cool. Now here's something I didn't even know existed. Till just this instant. <laughs> An Esterbrook pencil. Matching. So more old fashioned type of Esterbrook pencil. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if maybe they sold Esterbrooks at their old gross, at their old uh, uh, drugstore. Okay, and this last one is a larger package. This one is something I actually did order. I don't order ink in the winter because it's too hard to, uh, you know, you, you always worry it's going to freeze, especially if you're getting minus 20s in the Fahrenheit or worse. <laughs> And uh, so I just never order ink in the winter. But I did go a little nuts and ordered some, some notebooks. Uh, this is a company called Cognitive Surplus. There is a review of this brand of notebook coming. I'm not sure when, but it's coming. I, I appreciate this because the last time I ordered from them, the notebooks were all dinged up and smashed, and I was kind of embarrassed that these beautiful notebooks, and yet when I review it, it's going to be all dinged up and smashed. So it looks like they have upped their packaging game. I did complain, but you know, what are you going to do? I've given a few of these away as gifts, too, because they're attractive. My non-dinged up ones were given away as gifts. Ah, all right. So their thing is science-type packaging. So this is all languages. I have one upstairs that's uh, neurons. You know, they. this is the hypothesis. They have a whole bunch of stuff. Recycled paper, that's nice. Suppose They're fairly fountain pen friendly. And they advertise them as such. So they are thinking of my market. Inside, one of the things I like, they have several different layouts. Some of them are blank and lined. Some of them are graph and graph. Some of them are graph and lined. And then there's some with dots. <clears throat> this is a, a night forest, dusk forest, something like that. It's attractive anyway. Oh yeah, this, was, this one is dot grid. Cephalopod, I, I like squid, I'm sorry. And octopuses are cool too. These look, oh, there's a squid. That's an octopus. Oh, that's something I haven't seen in them before. And this is another dot grid. Oh yeah, this purple one has that as well. Let's see if the green one does. They do seem to have new packaging. I'm not used to that. Nope. When I bought them before, they all came with this. So I don't know if that's a change or what's going on. And this is graph and lined again. This one is... What is this one? Well, look on the back here. Something with gears. I can't remember. Anyway, they're attractive notebooks. And they have good paper, not maybe the best paper. Don't expect Tomboy River paper, but good paper. So you got to see a little bit of an unboxing today, so I hope that was worth it. <laughs> uh, and I will be dusting myself off and vacuuming the floor after filming this. So I thank you for watching. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens at all price points, please subscribe. 
If uh, you'd like to talk about anything you've seen here today, whether it be one of the pens or anything else I brought up in the unboxings, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. So hope that was useful, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.